In this video, we'll explore a high quality rendering workflow for the setup we created in the previous tutorial. If you just downloaded the project files to follow along with this tutorial, we need to do one thing before we can get started. Make sure that you have L underscore my level open. So just double click that if you haven't and you'll get this scene. Now go under simulations and H pass image media source as it open that up and under sequence path, go to these three dots to choose a file. In the download, you'll have this position texture sequence zip. So just unsubscribe that and go down the folders until you find this pos.01.exr. So you want to make sure that you choose frame number one and press open. You've also downloaded an asset called rampbackdrop.fbx. I made a new folder called meshes and I'll just drag and drop rampbackdrop.fbx into that folder. Material import method set to do not create materials, disable import textures and search locations do not search. Press import. You can use any kind of ramp that you want. This is just a cube with bevels on it and a few faces deleted and UVs attached to it. So drag and drop that asset into your scene. Make sure that the transforms are all set to zero. It's a bit too small. So we'll just scale that up. I found 7.5. 7.5 and 5 to be nice values for this setup. At this point, we'll go through all the necessary steps to get this rendered out of Unreal, edited in DaVinci Resolve. So first you'll notice that we're currently in unlit mode. We need to set that to lit. Now everything is black. We'll go up to this add button, go to lights, rect light, zero the transforms, and we can now see something in our scene. I'll just move that over to the side, hold alt and drag it out to duplicate it. Press E to rotate, W to move. And now we have a very rough three point lighting setup. Now, if you look at my scene you can see when I look up here and then down here the brightness of the scene changes that's because we have auto exposure enabled to disable that go to the add button and find a post process volume under visual effects in the details panel search for infinite extend unbound then search for exposure and change metering mode to manual and change the exposure compensation until you have a value where you can see something if we open up our level sequence under this clipboard here we'll see that we get this timeline and we have our simulation running if you want to understand what happens here, you can watch the previous tutorial where I go over all of that in a bit more detail. So if we press play now and we get a little bit close to our particles, we'll see that they get these weird long streaks after them. That's because of Unreal Engine's motion blur, which doesn't really behave well with the way we're dealing with Niagara particles. So we're going to do motion blur in post. And in order to do that, we first need to go back to our post process volume and search for motion blur, turn off motion blur. Set the amount to zero and now we no longer have these streaks running after our particles. I will create a camera by pressing this camera button right here. Now we're piloting our camera and we can just move this over so we find a shot that we like and if we go under the camera and the details panel focus settings and draw debug focus plane we have this manual focus distance which is set very high at the moment. If we roll that down we will eventually start to see the focus plane and we just want that intersecting with the geometry so that intersection is where our camera will be focused. Then I'll disable this draw debug focus plane. And we'll see now that our simulation is in focus and the background is out of focus. That's perfect. Now we need to set up some render settings. Part of the render settings is color management because Unreal Engine uses ACES color space in its viewport. And we need to make sure that we get all of the benefits of ACES in our post editing software. So in order to do that, we actually need to download something. So I've linked this in the description. It's the ACES 1.2 config on GitHub. So you can just download it from here. It's the zip file. Download that and unzip it somewhere on your computer. Then create a new folder called OCIO. Right click, move your mouse out of the way and search for open and choose open color IO configuration and name that OCIO. If you open up this OCIO asset, you'll see that we can select our configuration file. So get these three dots and locate this ACES 1.2 folder where you have the config.ocio file. Open that up. We need to add two desired color spaces so press this plus button twice. The first one will be ACES CG. The second one will be Utility Linear sRGB. Now we'll set up the render settings. So go to Window, Cinematics, Movie Render Queue. Press the plus button to add my sequence. Go to Unsaved Config. First, we'll delete the JPEG sequence. This time we're going to render an EXR sequence instead. So press Setting, add an EXR sequence. Press Setting again and add a color output. Press Setting one more time and add Game Overrides. Go up here where it says Load, Save, preset and we'll save this as a preset called aces underscore no mb for no motion blur and draft 
because this is not the high quality render settings. 1920 by 1080. We'll save that under cinematics, a new folder called movie pipeline config and save. So under color output, we need to open this up, enable OCIO configuration. Then under color configuration, the configuration source will be our OCIO asset. The source color space is utility linear sRGB and the destination color space is ACES CG. Under deferred rendering, we need to add the rendering pass that will allow us to create motion blur in post. So that lives under additional post process materials, index one, movie render queue underscore motion vectors. So the motion vectors are what we're interested in. We wanna make sure that that is enabled and then we'll just save our preset again and override it. Press accept. Before we render, if we move a little bit closer to our particles, we'll see that they aren't casting any shadows at the moment. So to enable the shadow casting, go on your NS particles in your outliner and enable cast shadow. Now these balls are casting shadows shadows. Before we render, we need to make sure that this kill percentage is set to zero. This is an optimization feature that we created in the last video to make sure that we can control how many particles we're previewing in Unreal while we're working. It's not a lot of fun to work in Unreal Engine while the kill percentage is so low. So we're going to shut down our sequencer, go up to these three lines in the top left corner of the viewport, disable real time. And now you can set the kill percentage to zero. And going back to the movie render queue, we're now ready to render our sequence. So we'll just press render local and wait for the render to finish. We'll now grab our rendered sequence and put it into DaVinci Resolve to make sure that we have that part of the pipeline covered. So if you go to your movie renders folder in your Unreal project, you'll find this EXR sequence. And you just want to select all of the files in the EXR sequence. Drag and drop them onto the timeline of your DaVinci Resolve project and we'll see our render is now in DaVinci Resolve. You might notice that some parts of this render look quite a bit different in terms of how much light is there and that's because we also need to set up a little bit of color management in DaVinci Resolve. This is very easy to do so we'll just go to this color panel here and on the right hand side we have something called an ACES transform. Drag and drop that onto the node called 01. Set the ACES version to 1.2 set the import transform to ACES CG and the output transform to sRGB now we have exactly the same result that we did in Unreal Engine. To get the motion blur, we need to go to DaVinci Resolve's compositor called Fusion. That's this magic wand in the middle. Clarity's sake, I'm going to go to my media pool and drag my sequence in again separately. If we press 1 on the keyboard with this new sequence selected, we can see it on the left-hand side of our DaVinci Resolve. And we need to find the motion vectors. Go over here in the inspector and find channels and set the RGB channels to the respective motion vectors. Leave the alpha alone. Now we'll go to effects and search for motion and select vector motion blur. Put that in between media in and media out. We'll set the X channel to be red and the Y channel to be green. If we plug this in, nothing really happened. That's because these values are very low. So we'll just turn the scale way up to something like 1000. Everything is completely blurred. And that's because Resolve expects this value where nothing is happening to be zero, but Unreal Engine renders that value to be 0.5. So we need to offset that a little bit. And we're going to do that by searching in the effects panel, channel booleans, and drop that in between your motion vectors and your motion blur. Then go back to effects and search for background. And we'll just set the background color to be 0.5 in red and 0.5 in green. Then get this blue arrow from channel booleans and connect that with background. On channel booleans, we'll set the operation to subtract. And now this one turned transparent. That's because the alpha needs to be set to do nothing. Get this green arrow from channel booleans and connect with the background. Now we'll see that we have some motion blur on our scene. This might be way too much. Put this scale down to 100. We can scrub through this and we can see that there is motion blur happening. All that's left to do now is make all of this look just a little bit nicer. So we're going to apply some materials to our balloons, to our grains and to our backdrop and we're going to refine the camera and light setup a little bit. To get materials on the balloons we're actually going to steal a material from the Quixel bridge. So go up here to the add icon Quixel bridge and we'll go to imperfections and we'll take these wipe marks. Press download and press add. This created a material instance which looks like this. We could apply just this material instance to all of our spheres but I'm just going to duplicate it once at first and apply that to one of the spheres so we can see what it looks like and we're just going to make this look a little bit more balloon rubbery. I'm going to go under properties and metallic and turn that down to zero. Then we'll take the albedo color B and we'll just change this to 
something like this. Hit OK. Then we can change the tiling. And if you want the albedo contrast to be less, you can change the color A as well to something that's a bit more similar to your color B, something like that. And if we enable these two, min roughness mask, max roughness mask, we can change the min and max value of our roughness because we don't want it to be too extreme. It just needs to add a little bit of information. So then we're happy with this one. We'll save it. I will just duplicate this three more times and apply those other three one by one to the other balloons. So now we can go in and individually change the color of each balloon. Now I'm happy with the colors. I'll make a material for our grains. And I don't think we need a high quality texture like this one for our grains. So we're just going to make our own material for that. So I'll make a new folder and right click make a new material m underscore grains dive into the material and we'll take the particle color and plug that into the base color we'll hold s and left click to create a scalar parameter and name that roughness multiplier then we'll create a dynamic parameter take the roughness multiplier create a multiply multiply that by parameter one from the dynamic parameter input that into roughness set the roughness multiplier to one. And just in case we want to change the specular value as well, we'll add another scalar parameter, call it specular, and set the default to 0.5, input that to specular. Then we'll create a material instance, MI grains. To apply this material, we need to go back into our Niagara system. We'll go to simulations, NS particles, open that up. I'll just make sure that real time is off in this viewport to save on resources. Then we'll go to mesh renderer, enable material overrides, add an element, open up that element and search for MI grains, plug that in. Then we'll see that now all of our particles are white. That's because right now our particles don't have a color set. So we're going to open up the initialized particle module and go to color mode where it says unset, change that to random range. If we hit save again, we'll see that some particles are now white and some particles are black. We will take this range, change it around so that we get a more sand color feel to these particles. Now we need to create a dynamic material parameter. And we'll just take parameter one because that's the one we're using for our roughness. And we'll also change this to a random range float. And let's say that the randomness is between 0.05, 0.4. Now we just need a material for our backdrop. So to keep this extremely simple, I'm just going to take one of these rubber materials that we created and duplicate that. Apply that to the background just by dragging it out into the viewport where the background is. And I'll just apply a different color to the color A, something like this. Maybe change the tiling a little bit to 5 on both axes. Then I want to bring the roughness values much closer to each other. So I'm just going to bring up the minimum roughness and as well bring up the maximum roughness just a little bit to something like 0.5 and 0.65. And if we go here to show and hit the grid, we'll disable the world grid so we can see our texture much clearer. And we'll see that we get this nice imperfection across the floor, which is also what we have on our spheres. We're going to mess around with the lighting a little bit now. So we're going to choose this one as our key light. We'll take the rect light 2 and try to lower the intensity of that down to something like 2 and make it quite a bit bigger to make the light that it casts much softer. And I'll drag it a little bit away. You can go up here where it says lit mode and change to path tracing. And this will show you a path traced version of your render and you can spot what are the differences and what are things that maybe could improve in my lumen lit scene. So one thing I notice is the bounce light here is very weak in the lumen scene, but it's quite strong in the path tracing scene. I'm going to take my key light and here where it says indirect lighting intensity, I'll just increase that, see if that does anything good for me. I think I'll put that to three. Let's go back to one and see that definitely made a difference. Maybe five or four or might be a good compromise. I think I'll lower the intensity of my rim light, going to increase the scale of it, maybe bring it back up. You can also play around with the temperature. So if you go on one of your lights and you press use temperature and enable that, you can roll it up or down to see if you prefer one or the other. Now, I think there's a little bit of light missing in my scene. I'm going to add a skylight. And this skylight can behave like a cheated HDRI. So I'm going to change the source type to specified cube map. Take this gray dark texture cube. That brightens up our entire scene a lot. But I'll change the intensity scale down to something like 0.1. So now that I'm quite happy with my lighting setup, I just need to put my camera in a position. Because the scene is quite small, the camera is going to zoom around fast, even if I've scrolled the speed all the way down. So I'm just going to go up here, camera speed lower it a little bit so if we just go back a little bit somewhere where we're able to see the entire scene make sure the deeper focus lane is in the correct position we'll set a keyframe on frame one and another one at 148 here at frame 148 gonna move forward make the interpolation between them linear 
do this by marking both of them, hit clicking, hit linear. The reason that we've named the sequence the way that we have, so we can add more shots, but we can also add more takes of the same shot. And now we're ready to render the shot down my sequencer real time, turn that off, set the kill percentage down to zero. We'll take our three sequences here and apply our pieces, no motion blur draft 1920 by 1080. After rendering this close up, I found out that I had actually made a mistake. You need to take this geometry cache and just roll it back from starting at frame 1 to starting at frame 0. Once we're happy with our draft version of our renders, we should render it out in high quality. So we're going to enable all of the high quality settings in the movie render queue. First of all, I just duplicated my no motion blur draft called no motion blur high quality. And I added this anti-aliasing setting. We want to set the spatial sample count to 8. Tick on override anti-aliasing. Under advanced, set the engine warmup count to 12. Add console variables. I'm not going to go in depth about these. Here you can see the console variables that I use. Just going to Save this again as my high quality. Make sure to apply that all of the other ones and hit render look. Once you've rendered out your shots, you can repeat the process in DaVinci Resolve, cut it together however you like, and end up with something like this.